Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's problem is says that you are given an albino mouse when you cross this mouse to a wild type all of the F1 progeny appear normal or like a wild type. Consider the following three possibilities for the genetic basis of the albino trait. First, recessive allele of the single gene. Second, recessive uh, alleles of two genes acting in series and uh, third, recessive alleles of two genes acting in parallel. For each of the three possibilities, give the proportion of albina and normal looking mice among the F2 generation. So I recommend you to pause the video here, try to solve this problem on your own first and when you would be ready you can run video again and you can compare your answer with my answer and explanation. The first question is pretty simple. We have to consider that uh, this uh, albino phenotype is caused by recessive allele of the single gene. Uh, that gives us information, for example, if dominant allele A would make normal pigment, so say globular protein, and if recessive allele A would be defective, so would make misshaped protein. In this case, uh, we uh, cross uh, one wild type mouse with another uh, mouse that is albina and all of the F1 generation going to be phenotypically normal. So going to be capital A and small a from uh, this parent F1 generation can get only normal allele and from this parent only can get defective allele. So in simple Mendelian genetics this uh, phenotype would be normal. So what is going to happen in the F2 generation? If we cross F1 with F1. So basically uh, we have one genotype that is heterozygous, another genotype that is heterozygous. Both of them look normal, but in the progeny in F2 generation, so this is going to be F2 generation, uh, the genotypes and phenotypes going to be as follows. So in F2 generation we would see that one quarter would be albina, would have two defective alleles and wouldn't be able to produce normal proteins. And uh, we would see that three quarters uh, would produce normal uh, phenotype and would produce pigment. So let's say this is going to be yellow pigment. So once again, we at the beginning uh, parental generation, we had one mice that produced pigment, another mice that doesn't produce pigment, and 100% of the progeny in F1 generation we would see would also produce a pigment. And when we cross this F1 generation with itself or self it, uh, this is going to be our results. So as you see one quarter of the progeny would be affected in the F2 generation. So now we can move to the second question recessive alleles of two genes acting in series. So basically in this model uh, we have two genes, say gene A and gene B. Both of these genes in diploid organisms can be represented by two uh, alleles, dominant and recessive. So um, genotype of one parent would be capital A capital A, capital B, capital B, and genotype of the second parent would be small a, small a, and small b, small b. So once again, imagine that each allele here would produce normal protein. Uh, one can be protein, another can be uh, enzymes that modify it um, to its final form, when it would be uh, perceived by us as a pigment. And uh, when, of course, all four alleles would be normal, we would see 
that uh, here we would see normal proteins and normal uh, enzymes. But uh, when parent doesn't produce normal proteins, doesn't produce normal enzymes, of course, uh, phenotype of such a parent would be albino. So, once again, this is going to be albino, and this one would produce normal phenotype. So, what we can see in the uh, next generation, in the F1 generation, in this model, we would see that 100% uh, of the progeny uh, would be heterozygous for both genes, for the gene A and for the gene B, because from parent 1, uh, progeny only can get uh, dominant allele, but from the parent 2 only recessive allele. Dominant allele here and recessive allele here. So we know that uh, all uh, F1 generation is going to be heterozygous for both genes. Once again, we have to cross this generation F1 with itself. And what we can expect, what the phenotypic ratios we are expecting in the following generation. So um, basically now we have to find all the gametes that um, these parents can produce. The first variant of the gamete would be capital A and capital B. So capital A and capital B. Second variant would be capital A and small b. Capital A and small b. Third variant of the gamete would be small a and capital B, small a, and capital B, and the last variant would be small a and small b, small a and small b. So uh, second parent, because second parent has the same genotype as parent one, also would produce the same type of the gametes. So uh, let's say this is going to be female, so female gametes would be X cells and uh, Another parent would be male and his gametes would be sperm. So, capital A, capital B, capital A, small b, small a, and capital B, and the last variant would be small a and small b. Now we have to build a Punnett square, so this is going to be four columns and four rows so we would see 16 cells and in each cell we have to put the genotype as a cross of the specific gamete so this is how we can find all the possible genotypes for example here we would have capital A capital A capital B capital B, capital A, capital A, capital B, small b. So recessive alleles comes from this parent and dominant allele B comes from this parent. Capital A, small a here, capital B, capital B here, capital A, small a here, capital B, small b here. Now I speed up my video. So now I finish the table. So basically what we are looking for, we are looking that um, at least one gene A have to be dominant and at least one gene B have to be dominant in order for the phenotype to be normal, otherwise um, uh, the phenotype would be albino. As you see here, uh, organisms cannot produce no normal um, proteins, no normal uh, enzymes. So of course, this is going to be albino phenotype. So what we see here, we see here that uh, one dominant allele present here. So this organism can produce uh, normal enzyme, but but as you see, cannot produce normal protein. So once again, phenotype would be um, albino, and here we see that at least uh, one normal protein, one allele would produce normal protein, but uh, none normal enzymes would be present. So once again, 
uh, this genotype means albino phenotype. And the same picture here and here and here. So let's count one, two, three, four, five, six. And here is the last one. So now uh, we have ratio of the normal pigment, uh, normal uh, phenotype of the mice uh, as 9 to 7. So 7 would be albina and 9 would have a normal pigmentation. And this was example when genes uh, work in series. So one gene produce one product, it can be normal or defective, and then another gene also would produce product uh, that would modify the first one, or this can be another protein that would um, make uh, protein aggregation, and so active pigment would be made. So now let's return to our last question. Our last question. Uh, recessive alleles of two genes acting in parallel. So what we can expect, what ratio we can expect. And this time imagine that this is chromosome. And here is another chromosome. This is two homologous chromosomes. One you got from your mother side, another from your father side. If we took example mouse, uh, mouse also have uh, one uh, homologous chromosome inherited from one parent, another from another parent. And imagine that um, here is a gene A that uh, specifies some uh, pigment and here is, can be another allele that specifies the same pigment but once again one would produce normal protein another one defective and now imagine that this gene duplicated so now we can find the same gene in the different place on the chromosome basically this is normal many genes in our organism or any other animal uh, can be duplicated or may have multiple copies throughout the genome, not necessary on the same chromosome. It can be the same gene on the different chromosome completely. So, uh, once again, different variants are possible here. It can be two dominant alleles or two recessive alleles. So, basically, what would happen? We may get different combinations, as I said. For example, um, two normal alleles in uh, locus number one and for example two defective alleles in the locus number two. Another variant would be uh, in locus one one dominant allele another recessive in locus number two uh, it can be also dominant and recessive and one more variant uh, locus number one two defective alleles and in locus number two, also two defective alleles. So as you see, uh, whenever we would see in locus one or locus two at least one normal allele, phenotype would be normal. And the only way when uh, phenotype would be albino, when both uh, loci would have two defective alleles. According to our problem, as you remember, we had two parents, one uh, that produced normal uh, proteins, normal uh, pigments, so genotype in this case would be capital A, capital A, and capital B, capital B, we cross with albina, that is small a, small a, and small b, small b, and 100% of the F1 generation uh, in this model would be capital A, small a, and capital B, small b. 
Once again, when we cross uh, with uh, the same genotype from this F1 generation uh, in the following generation, uh, ratios are going to be uh, as in this previous example. Uh, both parents are going to produce this type of gametes and as you see only one genotype here would produce uh, albino phenotype when once again both gene A and B would be defective. Basically in this uh, variant we may say that um, we have two gene A's here. Say gene A and instead of uh, gene B we can say gene A prime and instead of um, small b we can say uh, A small prime. So the ratios in the last example would be 15 to 1. 15 um, genotypes with normal phenotypes and 1 uh, would be albino. So now we answered all the questions. I hope this video will be helpful for you. So just last uh, ratio I will put here that is 3 to 1. So we have ratios today 3 to 1, 9 to 7 and 15 to 1. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. Share this video with your classmates and see you in the next video. Goodbye.